it will not express while you are divided only when I the one am accepted as the Christ of you and the Christ of all who walk the earth are you ready to live in the will of the Father then there is one will and it is the will of I and each of us must dwell with this until we can rest in the I Christ meek unto the will of the Father taking in a dictation from the Spirit learning that there is a communication method whereby the living Spirit dwells upon the keyboard of our seven churches playing a new kind of melody putting those seven churches into very incredibly wonderful combinations so that they are interwoven bringing out slowly daily in every way the full potential of our being in a way that we as humans had not been capable of doing and slowly this invisible will functioning through the seven gifts of God in you lifts you into the fullness of those gifts into a new level of yourself no longer is the government of your life in your mental capacities but rather in your spiritual capacities and those spiritual capacities those seven churches in you are under the government of the will of God in you because you have accepted I Christ thou Christ as the one and only I behind this physical mental appearing universe this brings you into the tree of life that's how the fruitage of the invisible spirit comes into your life and so you see we're at that place where it becomes necessary to face the one great issue not how smart are you not what have you got to show for your life on this earth so far but to what degree are you accepting spiritual identity for that's what you're going to take with you this is what Christ in Jesus was revealing to Christ in John that only spiritual identity accepted lifts us out of passing time out of transient bodies out of the ups and downs of a false human sense of life And that is why we are moving slowly now to let the seed of truth permeate every being until there is an inner realization that unless I am Christ I am piercing Christ unless I am accepting Christ as identity I am rejecting Christ as identity and then I am crucifying Christ as much today as men have in the past every rejection of Christ's identity is a crucifixion of the Christ we are stepping out of the world's stream of thought which crucifies the Christ by rejection of Christ's identity and we are putting on 
garment of immortality by accepting. I feel that what we ought to do is to nail down our understanding at this point with scripture so that we see the scripture's clear meaning the basis of everything we will do after this will depend on having reached a certain level of acceptance John to the seven churches which are in Asia grace be unto you and peace from him which is, which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are, be, which are before his throne. Now we touched that briefly last time. The seven gifts of God in you are the seven churches, and they are under grace. Nothing can touch them, nothing can alter them, they are the seven unchanging purposes of your being. The human sense of things may go astray, but those seven purposes in you are there. They are all in the seed of Christ. They will flourish as you become aware of them. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead. John is establishing here that because Jesus Christ was the first begotten, he has demonstrated that he knows the way to the kingdom of God. There is no other first begotten than the one. And so we have the priceless privilege of following that one who through being resurrected of the dead proved to us that there is a life beyond our false sense of mortality and showed us the nature of that life. Now he is called the faithful witness. And he said before Pilate, I have come to bear witness of the truth. And he bore that witness faithfully, which means that he had traveled these seven purposes within himself. He had found his own Christ identity. He had submitted his mortal consciousness to that Christ identity so that the will of the Father in Christ could be transmitted and permeating his entire being. And this in turn had lifted him through the fulfillment of each of the seven purposes into Christ realized, into immortality attained. And as a consequence, having pursued the narrow path of Christ identity instead of the wide broad path of mortal identity he had rejected every temptation that would deny him to be that Christ every temptation that would deny the beggar or the hypocrite or the fool or the cripple to be other than the Christ and in his fidelity to everything that would make him deny Christ in another or himself he became a faithful witness so this becomes part of our path I too must learn to deny not the Christ of my being but the mortality that appears around me I must learn to face every thought which would tempt me to believe that there is no Christ identity where I see the leper, the cancer victim, the tubercular victim, the arthritic victim, 
Every form of disease is a temptation to make me believe that Christ is not there. And then I'm not a faithful witness. He had faced these temptations and in many cases visibly touched those who were diseased to prove that Christ's identity was there and not physical disease. Always he was witnessing that Christ is the only life on this earth and that every appearance to the contrary is a lie about the Father and by agreement with that lie he too would be piercing the Christ. He did not. And therefore he entered into life itself and became what is called the first begotten of the dead. We are to follow the path of becoming begotten of the dead to enter life by being a faithful witness of the infinite nature of Christ without opposite ever present ever available ever functioning as the invisible child of the Father where the physical multitudes appear to be this was the faithful witness he was and John was later this is what a faithful witness is and only a faithful witness walks in the kingdom of God consciously and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. It also said above that, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. The blood has never quite been explained as I'd like you to know it now. Yes, the blood is the wisdom Christ in you those seven purposes in you fulfilled become the one river of life which is the blood of the Christ the seven purposes of Christ in you fulfilled become one moving stream of the Father's integrated will in you then you're in the upper waters above the firmament the living will of God is flowing as the fullness of the seven spirits of God in you and that living stream is the substance that waters the tree of life which gives you dominion and glory the blood then of the lamb is that pure river of life flowing out from the throne or will of God in you which feeds you living substance And that living substance is as the sap on the tree, flowing up through the tree and out as the blossom and the fruit. That living substance in you does exactly the same. That is the blood of the Lamb. That is the blood of Christ. Drink of my blood, he said at the Last Supper, but that he that said this at the Last Supper was not Jesus. That he was the Christ of your being. 
saying, Drink of the seven fruits of the Spirit that pour through the seed of your own Christhood. For that is substance. And that is not out there. That is not out there in the sense world. That is the kingdom of God within you. And that is how he made us kings. You are a king when you are in your kingdom of God within. For you are a king there because there is no power higher than the kingdom of God within. That living substance of the combined gifts of God in you flowing as the stream of life is the river in which the voice of the Father speaks and melts the outer world. Do you see then the power of life is within you now? Do you see then that the letter to the seven churches is to the seven powers of God in you which combined make the flowing river of life which take you to the upper waters of the firmament where divine substance feeds and sustains your being through grace. That is the language of the soul that John is bringing to us now. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. Not only a king in your kingdom but a priest unto God are you. How? Priests unto man would be those who speak the doctrine of man. A priest unto God is one who teaches the doctrine of God. And in the inner self of you, this moving river of life is the very substance of the Father flowing directly into your awareness making you one who receives directly from God his blessings. And that makes you a priest of God. Each of us, in the acceptance of I, Christ, becomes a priest unto God. And we then go forth to shower the blessings of our newfound consciousness, of our living church within. And this is what makes you a priest in God. Not only do you become aware that you are a priest in God, but until you do, you are separated from the direct purpose of God expressing in you. Only the priest of God. Not in divine, only in divine doctrine, not in man's doctrine, are you in living revelation? Now you can see that inasmuch as the world is not doing this, the world is not in touch with God and cannot bring God into mortal experience. This constitutes our sense of separation from God and makes us susceptible to the belief that God is not the only power. But now this is all being rectified in our consciousness. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Now when it says he comes with clouds, that means Christ within you and only Christ within you comes with clouds. And those clouds signify purity. Perfection. He cometh with purity. Only from the Christ within do you receive the purity of God. 
From men you receive concepts, ideas, interpretations. They do not come with clouds. Human authorities do not come with pure perfection. Behold, he cometh with clouds. And the he he is speaking of is Christ within. And every eye shall see him. And so now, if you've been dwelling in the belief that you're not bright enough or spiritual enough, forget it. Because the Father says every eye shall see him. The seed of Christ in you, you shall see. Because it is the will of the Father. And seeing means you shall understand. You shall accept. Every eye shall see him. There is no individual on the face of the earth who will not ultimately accept I, Christ, as his identity. We need no further authority for that. We have just seen it in these words. Every eye shall see him. And even those who have pierced him That includes us all, for we all have pierced the Christ of our own being. We probably did it up to two o'clock today. And we'll do it up to two o'clock tomorrow, and we'll keep doing it, but less and less. Because we are striving not to pierce the Christ, but to accept the Christ. Every eye shall see him, even those who pierced him. And I know he's talking directly to me when he said that. Because until you have accepted I, Christ, you have pierced the Christ. And then he says, and all the kindreds of the earth shall see him. And the kindreds mean all that is material. All material consciousness on earth shall be lifted into Christ consciousness. So you see it has nothing to do with your personal capacities at all. The seven gifts of God within you will see to that. you can simply delay your realization of it. But your denial can only continue up to a certain point. And that point, each of us will learn at one time, if we have not at that point reached the place where I, Christ, is my name in spite of what the world may say. All kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Now the wailing of the kindreds of the earth means that all mortal consciousness knowing it is being pushed out will wail. This is referring to your remnant of mortal consciousness within yourself. It will wail as it's doing now. Oh, I can't go that far. That's the wailing. And each of us will put up this inner fight. No, 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 don't make me be the Christ. My heavens, it's the last thing I want to be. Just let me be a happy mortal. That's the wailing. But every kindred of the earth which wails will wail without any effect. Because we have been wailing now these thousands of years not to be the Christ. And finally, the intelligence that says, I, of mine own self, can do many things, is beginning to realize how stupid it really is. And the last wailings of this false ego will tell you ultimately that you have reached a new plateau. You don't feel uncomfortable to accept a divine life as your life. 
You're even willing to believe you might be a divine life. You're even willing to go all the way and live as a divine life. forsaking all the concepts of the sense mind and then there's no more wailing of the kindreds of the earth I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the ending saith the Lord which is and which was and which is to come the Almighty when the wailing stopped within you you hear the voice declare that I am Alpha and Omega we'll see exactly what that means as it declares it to John in a moment I John who also am your companion your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ now you might wonder why John says I John who am also your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ he is saying very simply this I John and Jesus Christ were both human beings just as you had thought you were we went through the very same struggles you went through we are your companions in tribulation we are your brother we're not some divine entity that came out of the clouds we walked on this earth in a mortal frame we had mortal problems we went through every tribulation you're going through and a few others in addition and finally decided we weren't mortal beings and came through into the acceptance of I Christ as you will do and that is why now I John am able to tell you that having gone through all of those tribulations I can now say that I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard a great voice as of a trumpet saying I am Alpha and Omega first and the last and what thou seest write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia now this is the eleventh verse of the first chapter and I want you to make a mental note to look at it many times and the reason is this I am Alpha and Omega is the Christ within you John heard it but you could have heard it too because it's the same Christ it is saying I am the first and the last I am the beginning, Alpha, and I am the ending, Omega. Meaning you came out of me and you are returning to me. There's no place else to go. I am all there is. I am the first and the last. I am that which was and that which is and that which will be. All there is is I, Christ, the Son of God. There is no other. And you are learning that you have come out of me and you are returning to me that is what the voice is saying now to John he is listening to Christ within say John you are no longer John you always were I you went out of I and you are coming back to I you are now the immortal John the Christed John welcome home to your true self and what thou seest write in a book now this is the part I want you to think of frequently what you write in your book determines what your life is the way you write in your book is to be conscious when you are conscious of I that which you write in your book 
through this consciousness of I is the living substance and because that substance is what writes your book your outer experience is divinity expressing John you have touched the living substance of I now let I write your book for you and writing your book means living your life the life you live is the book you write you write your own book you live your own life but what you write depends on whether you're using divine writing equipment or human whether you're in mind or soul whether you're in the ignorance of God or the knowledge of God in the substance of God or the counterfeit now John you're ready to write the real book the book of life not the book of imitations for I the Alpha and the Omega I am the living substance I will write your book I will live your life and this is what John is hearing from the Christ within when you hear this from the Christ within you become a living substance of God realized and all that the Father hath is in that substance your book must be written by Christ or your life will not express the fruits of Christ this is what John is hearing within himself what thou seest write in a book send it unto the seven churches now the Christ substance of you functions those seven churches and nothing else can this is the inner meaning of that, par that verse the seven churches of God in you can only be functioned by Christ and if only one percent of them is active in you it's because the mind of you has no capacity whatsoever to touch and nourish and sustain those seven gifts of God in you only Christ can do it and only Christ the deity can release Christ in you the eleventh verse of the first chapter is the key at this moment to finding that substance which can write the book of life unto Ephesus and unto Smyrna Pagama Thyatira Sardis Philadelphia Laodicea now those seven churches were seven visible, tangible churches which had been established and were doing spiritual work but as we explained last time they are the outpicturing of consciousness and they are in Christ consciousness and they are in you but not with those names and then I, meaning John turned to see the voice that spake with me having turned I saw seven golden candlesticks now these golden candlesticks are your capacities they are your seven unchangeable purposes and these golden candlesticks are the churches in you you see they hold a candle and that candle has a wick and when it's a flame you'll find the seven stars and these seven stars are called the angels of the churches they are the fulfillment of the seven purposes and all of this takes place as John is lifted higher and higher to reveal the nature of those seven stars and in the midst of the seven candlesticks one like unto the son of man clothed with a garment down to the foot 
girt about perhaps with a golden girdle now everything that's going to be said here is going to tell you that this one appearing is the chosen one Christ realized and all of the signs will say he has attained total illumination woolly hair so white garments girdled in gold down to the ankle you see the ankle length garment was the holiest of holy this was what the high priest wore in the ark only he who had the ankle length garment could go into the ark of the Hebrews and we find then that this which he sees among the seven candlesticks in the midst means he has fulfilled them this chosen one is the anointed who has fulfilled the seven unchangeable purposes and so he wears the ankle length garment and his garment is girdled he has the power he is yoked to God he and the father are one that's the golden girdle they are one but why is he saying all this not to enchant us with words but to establish the authority of the one who was the first begotten so that you will never make the mistake of following any other authority so that you will not make the mistake of thinking that with your human mind you have discovered a better authority than the first begotten and if you miss that point you miss all of it only the teaching of the one who attained the first resurrection is dependable according to this revelation and so all of our concepts all of the how many religions are there on this earth they all have a better way about God than the neighbor's religion and the revelation of St. John says take all of them and put them together and put them in a vault somewhere don't follow them you're following the wrong way to God this one that I saw in the midst of the seven candlesticks is the realized Christ that's your teacher and this one is the kingdom of God within you that's your teacher this one is the one who took Jesus through resurrection this one is the one who took John through resurrection this one is the one who said Pilate you're wasting your time you and your whole Roman Empire cannot crucify Christ this is your teacher the one who demonstrated I in the midst of you am the only power there is no other authority there is no other power than I in the midst of you and you don't need a musket and you don't need an atom bomb shelter and you don't need a tax shelter you need I in the midst of you for I stand in the midst of the seven candlesticks I control the destinies of every man on earth and now all of the symbols of this total power of I are brought forth by John his head and his hairs were white like wool and wool is the divine wisdom the whiteness of the wool is divine wisdom and knowledge white as snow and his eyes were as a flame of fire and the fire is a symbol of eternal truth he's showing you that if you want divine wisdom and eternal truth you go to him who stands in the midst of the seven candlesticks not to a human authority not to a human church you go to the church of God in you 
if you want God. And so he is bringing forth omnipotence, omniscience, omnipresence are all touched the instant that I, Christ, in you is born. His feet like unto fine brass, which means Christ is enduring, eternal, indestructible. No matter how many ways or directions you turn, you will always have to turn back to that which is the eternal life of God in you, Christ, like fine brass. As if they burned in a furnace. That means you are inseparable from God when you are in Christ in you. His voice is the sound of many waters. Many waters usually means many heavens. So that the Christ is speaking from the infinite, not from a finite, localized point of view. Christ speaks from the seven heavens. And he had in his right hand seven stars. That means the purpose is fulfilled. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. His countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Now that two-edged sword out of the mouth of Christ is very simple. Accept Christ and you walk out of the deadness to Christ into life. That's one edge of the sword. Reject Christ and you stay right out of heaven. And that's the other edge of the sword. In other words, acceptance or rejection by you determines which edge of the sword you get. You walk into heaven or you don't. That's the two-edged sword. And you have the alternative to decide. But Christ is unchanging. You walk into heaven through Christ. No man cometh to the Father except through me, says the Christ of your being. That's the two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. The sun shines. We all accept it. For warmth and for heat. And so the Christ in you shines. It sends out the truth of God. That's how it shines. It shines the truth of God to the world. And we either walk into this Christ and accept it or we don't. The truth is shining in you. And if you want the truth, you must come to Christ because I, Christ in you, I am the truth. If you want life, you must come to Christ because I, Christ in you, I am the life. And if you want the way, you must come to Christ for the same reason. If you want the resurrection from the living dead, come to Christ within you because I am the resurrection. And his sun shineth. This is a nowness. Just as the sun is shining now, Christ is shining the truth in you, awaiting recognition. We're talking about a living isness, not about a heavenly hereafter. We're talking about God now, not a God tomorrow. We're talking about a contemporary God, not a dead God 2,000 years ago. We're talking about God who is living and expressing as Christ in you, the Father within you. And this is your authority, who stands in the midst of the seven candlesticks, holding the seven stars in his right hand, the fulfillment of your being. Christ is the way. And when I saw him, says John, I fell at his feet as dead. 
Now you see what that means. This is the experience he was going through and in that high moment of ecstasy when he saw and felt and knew the Christ within himself he surrendered all sense of a personal John. He fell at the feet of the Christ within himself as dead. Goodbye to John. He accepts himself to be Christ. He's saying, do thou likewise. Goodbye to this me. Fall dead at the feet of Christ within yourself. Surrender to Christ within. This is what he did. This is why he entered the first resurrection. This is the acceptance. I, John, am not John. I am the Christ. For all this that he wrote here is what he saw within himself as you have in your inner experiences. Seen one thing or another, he was seeing his own Christ come, declaring itself, inviting him into reality. And he accepted by falling dead. He was rejecting mortal sense accepting Christ identity and then a strange thing happened when I saw him I, tell, I fell at his feet as dead and he laid his right hand upon me saying unto me fear not I am the first and the last Christ says to him fear not There never was anyone but me. The only one on this earth, I am. You don't have to fear anybody. There's not you and Christ. Get rid of that sense of duality. Fear not. I am the first and the last. You just come out of hypnotism, John. That's what's happened to you. I am you. And you're just awakening to that truth. When you accepted Christ, you merely accepted that there was no John. And you'll discover when you accept, I am Christ, the Christ within will let you know that there is only Christ where you stand. You might as well start knowing that now, because that's the purpose of this revelation. You're not there at all. Christ is. That's your name. When you accept Christ, you'll discover only Christ is where you are. <coughs> the first and the last means the only. You are now the living Son of God. In your acceptance, you come out of the hypnotism of the mortal self. And John is discovering that now when he has accepted I, Christ, am all there is, there is no longer a John. John, the disciple, is gone. John, the disciple, is dead. Just as Jesus was dead after the dove descended. Fear not, there is only I, says the Spirit, I am all there is. There never has been another. <laughs> you have walked in duality and you have suffered from duality. You have suffered from the belief in a self that did not exist. For always you have been the living child of the living Father made of spiritual substance. Walking in the false consciousness of a mortal me. John, you have just entered the seventh heaven where only Christ is. And that is your new name. Put that on your forehead. I am the Christ. Now, do we go through all those steps to discover what they are teaching us? Or does our faith begin to reach up and out and say yes, he is speaking about me. 
this is what I accept for me now. For John could not go through this until he had already made that acceptance. The final falling at his feet dead is the first resurrection. This is his announcement to the world. Don't you know that I am no longer in the flesh? I fell dead when I was born in Christ. I am walking in the kingdom of God now, he is saying. All that the Father hath is mine now. I will never know death. For I have just become aware that I am life. And I can never be less than I am. Christ is life. And the realization of Christ is the end of death. I am he that liveth and was dead and behold I am alive forevermore. All belief that there is such a thing as death is removed from the consciousness that knows itself to be the living life of God which is called Christ. This is that glorious experience of John's which is the inevitable experience of all the kindreds of the earth. For all eyes shall see him as John did. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of heaven. So you see, we come out of the hell of the belief in mortality into the realization that I am life itself. And the key is Emmanuel, God in you, realized. Write the things which thou hast seen, the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. Incidentally, seven stands for completeness, gold for enduring purity and the candlesticks are the unchangeable purposes or capacities or full possibilities of the gifts of God in each of us. Seven pure gold, pure enduring capacities. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. They are the fulfillment of those seven capacities. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Now then, we are to learn from here on what those seven capacities are but more than that how through Christ they are released that we may walk in a different universe than the changing good and evil concept of life that we have entertained in other words through John's revelation we are to be lifted out of the false sense of life that we have entertained out of the false religious teachings of the world into the living Christ message which was given on this earth by Christ Jesus and it is ironic that this is right in the Bible which is practiced in name only in lip service only 
by those who say Lord, Lord and hope that for their two words about God they are worshipping God. All of us have done that. We have all come out of homes that have only known how to say Lord, Lord but have not found that indwelling spirit which alone is the way to the Father's house. So we can condemn no man. Matter of fact, you cannot even be angry with your ancestors for not teaching this truth because you are your own ancestor. The one in the past who didn't teach this is you yourself. We all start from the Alpha and return to the Omega. We are all the beginning and the end. We are all the first and the last. He who was, is, and ever will be. We are all that one Christ. It isn't enough to know that. Even when you know it, You're still a toddler in Christ. And we have to mature so that the unveiling of Christ in us is not handled by our human ways, our human means, our human beliefs, our human effort. We have to fall dead to Christ. We have to mourn that we have been dead to Christ. And we have to come alive to Christ. For Christ is life. So our friend John has got us off to a good start here. And he will soon take us into the seven gifts. Which are the way to life itself. I think if you will practice in the morning awakening to Christ you will find an interesting quickening in your life. I Christ. And when you have a feeling for that turn to thou Christ which is the world around you so that you do not make the mistake of obeying only the first commandment and letting the second go by. I Christ, thou Christ. And it doesn't matter what the world shows forth, that is the eternal truth, which is always the truth, no matter what you see. It is the truth that will dissolve the false appearances of this world. I Christ, thou Christ. And then let that Christ which you acknowledge to be omnipresent here and there now. Let it be itself without all your fears that it isn't there. Just let it be itself while you are conscious of it. You see the key word? I must be conscious that I, Christ, is here and I, Christ, is there as thou, Christ. So that all that is present is Christ. And then don't try to manipulate Christ. Don't try to manipulate the outer world. I, the invisible Christ, acknowledged by you, I am the Father within. Just acknowledge me consciously and rest in the Word. I'll do the works. I'll arrange things. I will express, I will pour forth the activity of Christ. And you will be satisfied. That's where we are now and it's a good, good start to living the Christ life.
Now, if you want to prepare for next time, get out your parenthesis in eternity, and you'll find that the first letter to the churches promises that those who overcome to them will I give to eat of the tree of life. Well, what is that tree of life? What are we to overcome? How will that bring forth the first gift of God in us called the tree of life? Read it in the parenthesis in eternity under the chapter tree of life. You'll find it in the third section of the book. Tree of life. And that is the first promise of spirit to you. If you overcome, I will give thee to eat of the tree of life. It's an important tree. In the 22nd chapter of Revelation, you will learn there are 12 fruits from that tree. And if you want the fruits, you better have the tree. So that might be your preparation. We even thought we would get that far today, but didn't. Maybe it's so that you could have a chance to prepare so that we can walk shoulder to shoulder in the one experience. And then if you read the letter to the Ephes no, the letter to the church at Ephesus. We'll at least do that. We might go a step further, I don't know. I Christ, thou Christ, for God is all. See you soon and thank you.